Welcome back to our Code Refuse series. Today I'll show you a GitHub project in which the object dependencies have gone wrong. There's a principle called the tell don't ask principle, which is at the root of that problem. And, and I'll walk you through the process of, of removing that problem step by step. So if you don't understand tell don't ask, or wonder how to fix a dependency mess between classes, stick around. Welcome to Frankly Developing. I'm your host, Frank, and let's take a look at this project. You'll find the link to the GitHub repository in the description below. So I just checked it out and see that there are a few errors here. So I'm not sure what that is, so I have really strong error settings. So don't worry about it. Um, that looks a bit outdated. Uh, let's see. It's using the mono game framework. Okay. Theory lock. That was good. Oh, you shouldn't do that one. Like this is a local path that obviously doesn't work on my machine. So I won't have an editor config. Too bad. Good that I have my own. You can also see it here. There's an exclamation mark to share with something wrong. Okay. And well, there's a lot of stuff on in one place already. So look at the main program should be pretty simple. Yeah. We just create a game. Run it. Okay. Well, let's go to Troy, shall we? What does it even look like? Building, that's good. And there we go. No, no sharp menu you can play. Uh, apparently, select some level and play the monogram. Okay, so far, so good. We're not really interested in the game, are we? So, we want to look at what does the code really look like. So I took a quick look at this project and we're going to stay in this class here actually because there's an interesting aspect here. You can see there's the game state, which is an enum of these different things. And I've just shown the game quickly. So you see the main menu, level selection, there's an editor, settings, credits, and so on, the main game. So let me just copy these quickly for something to show you. Uh, if you look through this, then you notice there are some interesting variables you can define here. So we're looking at classes and the dependencies and we see a lot of them already here and they seem to kind of match up, right? So you have the main menu, there's a main menu class. You have the level select enum, there's a level select class. Well, there's no place state, but that probably is the game. There's an editor, there's settings and there's credits. Each of them is a class. So that's where we get suspicious already. Why do we need an enum and a class at the same time? feels like there's a bit of a redundancy already. Now there's some initialization going on there. Here all the objects are just created. All of them are just new. And the content, we update. So the game update main loop with the game time. And then you notice a switch over an enum. Like if you notice this, take a step back. Usually that is not a good sign. So if you switch over an enum and you use objects and you do object orientation, well, you may want to think towards polymorphism. Well, let's click a closer look. So when you're in a game, well, then there's a play thing that you update. It's given some of these properties. And then afterwards, there's a leaf here. And well, that is an output parameter of this game thing. So you call it, it gives you the leaf information and then you switch back to level selection which is what we just did. Uh, we also used the main menu, which is the update again. Does it also have an out parameter? No, it does not. Uh, it's most in a different way. See, there are properties that are public, like the buttons and whether they are pressed. So once you return from this, you can check, oh, has it been clicked? And if so, well, you have to go to the level select object to find new levels. Because, yeah, you are setting the level select game state. Of course, you could also press other buttons. And then you have something about the level select and how that works, and the editor, and the settings, and the credits. Phew, that should feel like not quite optimal to you. Let's see what the draw looks like. And 
you know, this is immediately apparent, like, why do you do the same thing each time? But you have to do all this switching over all this, right? So this is pretty clear indication that something is going wrong, because you always just want to draw the sprite batch. Okay, but why do you have to write one, two, three, four, five, six times just for each genome pointing to that object? So that will be what we're going to look at. If you like this sort of code review with hands-on demonstration of principles, then please consider liking the video as well. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, it would help a lot. Thank you very much. But now let's go down into the details of what exactly are these dependencies like. And we've seen the main class. Uh, that was called no no sharp game. So let's just say no no sharp here. And we use this enumeration, this game state that basically encoded where you are in the game. And there's a dependency to that. So that's being used by the no no sharp class. And similarly, we had like the main menu being used by the non short class. Level select, same thing, and a bunch of others. So this is already looking problematic. You can see this star-shaped picture of one thing in the middle and everything from the outside is reached by it. And if you keep going like this in a project, this will become what people refer to as a God class. It knows everything everywhere around, and that means that this class will be a big problem in terms of when you want to change something, you always need to touch this class. Now, let's take a look at the, the kind of logical, not the control flow, like the logical flow of things. So we, we start here in the known sharp class with the update method, and we want to do the game update loop. We look at the game state through the switch statement and find out that we are in the main menu, for example. And then we call the game menus update method to do whatever is needed for the main menu to update, which gives us this output parameter. So we look at that and realize, oh, where are we going? Well, maybe we're going to this level selection. And then we had some piece of code that had to call to the level select to make it load the levels. When, when that happened, we went back to setting the game state. And then that is basically the end of this big update method. And you can see the problem here in these lines, like you're going around everywhere. And if you do that and you can't stay local to a small group of small objects and not extend to everything else, then making a change on any of these places means that all of these red lines need to stay intact or you need to fix them if you change it. And that means it's really, really hard to make a change if you build your system like this. So let's take a look at the code again. And what we see here is this tell don't ask. We try to tell this main menu to just update everything. But then we have to ask it for the buttons because we know the logic here, not in the main menu on what should happen. So this is like, if you tell it, you expect that everything happens there on the other side because you send it a message to do things. You don't want to be the micromanager and know better than the main menu how to use and work with the main menu. That doesn't make any sense, really. So this is really a big problem here. Um, but how do we go about changing that step by step? Well, we want to introduce polymorphism in general, which sounds more complicated than it is. And in fact, if we look down to the switch here, you can immediately see like this isn't a big deal to get rid of. What's missing is a way to just call this draw method on each of those without actually caring which one it is. So we have the enum in place to store the current state, and we have the objects that represent each of the states. So why not combine this together and provide a common method on each of those? So let's see. What we need is something like 
interface. It's called an eye game state. Just stay, just stay really close on this game state here. Uh, we have to check the draw method again. What does that look like? Like this. So that's exactly what we need. Put that on the interface. So we need a draw method for the sprite patch. And now we go through our different classes here and just have them implement the interface. They already have that method implemented, right? It's already being called on each of them. So it's as simple as going to the class and saying, okay, you are now I my game state. And there's not even a compile error because now here's the implementation. It's already there. So let's go about uh, completing this for all of the classes. Okay, we're done on that one. So next up, how can we use that? So to call it through the interface and remove all of these duplicates, we need to keep track of which I game state we're in, which used to be the place and the responsibility of this variable. So instead of completely replacing it step by step, we introduce an extra redundancy, but with the goal of eventually replacing the enum. So whenever it's used, like here, we also want to know and set the current state. So instead of just having the private game state, we want an I game state. And let's call it the current state to differentiate it from the other one. And when this one is set, we want to also set one. But right now it's the main menu, so we need to wait for that to be created. Go in this one. So, okay, now it's the main menu. And notice the slight difference. We're not setting an enum, we're setting the actual object reference here, which is really the big thing that you need. And when you have the object, you don't want to use it. Enum. It's not the right, the same thing. And now we go through all of these, and each time we notice something. Brackets here. We also set it to the corresponding different object. Okay, now we're back in the draw method after replacing all of these assignments. And at this point, like this entire switch is available by taking the current state and using its draw method to draw that sprite patch. And that's it. Like This is the essence of polymorphism. You don't switch on these, you don't decide which one of these you call. That is what you use the interface for with all the different implementations of it. And you remove the entire switch and cut it down to this simple thing of saying, I draw this current state now. So I've shown you what would be like the first step towards getting rid of this problem. The next steps would be to move this logic that you ask things and then do something into the object. So you have a proper tell and ask implementation. But you also want to avoid the cycles. For example, the main menu needs the level select to select the level from which you can go back to the main menu. So it does need the main menu again. And you also want to make these update calls the same. So you can remove the second switch and complete the whole thing. And you have a really good state. And if you want to see more code refuse like this, my channel has some more available here. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, have fun developing.